What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna use the extension Helix Along Curve to create a spiral notebook inside of SketchUp. Um, so I think most of you know that I'm a big advocate of using extensions to make your life easier in SketchUp. I may actually make a video about why you should use extensions, but in the meantime, if you're looking for a list of my favorite extensions, you can check them out at the sketchupessentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in order to create this, you're gonna need the extension Helix Along Curve. And Helix Along Curve is a free extension that you can download, and I will link to that in the notes down below. It basically allows you to create spiraling helix shapes inside of SketchUp. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're just gonna rough out our notebook. So in this case, I'm just gonna use the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle that's eight inches by 10 inches. So um, I'm gonna type in eight comma 10, hit the enter key, and that'll be our notebook. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this notebook and I'm gonna rotate it. Um, no, I'm not. Um, the size was actually right the way that it was. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete out my default model. I don't need that for what we're doing right here. And so what I wanna do in this case is before I start drawing holes and everything else for the spiral to go through, I wanna go ahead and I wanna draw the spiral. And so in order to do that, what we need is we're gonna use the extension Helix Along Curve. Well, Helix Along Curve allows you to actually create a helix along a line that you draw. And so in this case, we're just gonna use this edge right here in order to draw our helix. And so you need to have an edge that this can go around and then you're just gonna click on this button right here. What this button right here is gonna do is it's gonna let you set the radius of the two ends right now. And so like right now, if I was to come in here and I was just to click okay, it would create a helix that has a first radius of three and 15 sixteenths and a second radius. So this allows you to create helixes that get wider at the bottom and taller at the top. In this case, we want this to say symmetrical, so we want these two values to be the same. So if I was to click OK right now, that would create a helix um, that continues all the way around this path. But you can see how this is far too wide. Really what we want is we want a helix that's going to run through a hole that's going to be probably something like... Uh, we'll say maybe three-eighths of an inch off of this line. So I'm just gonna undo that and we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna set these two to three-eighths of an inch. And I have no idea how that works in the real world from a dimension standpoint. So if I'm way wrong about my spiral on my notebook, yeah, I get it, I didn't really look it up. So we're gonna go ahead and try this again and I'm just gonna click OK. And you can see how what this does is this is gonna create this helix that runs through this. And uh, you, you can see how the radius of that helix is 3 eighths of an inch. And so in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna add a few more um, spirals in here. I want this to be one of those more like, um, one of those more narrow spirals with a lot of um, with a lot of rotations in it. So I'm just going to do a control Z and we're going to run this one more time. And in this case, I'm just going to adjust the number of laps to 32 instead of 16. The other thing I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and create a tube along this helix. So I want this to generate the helix, but I want it to create a tube as well. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say yes for create a tube. And I'm probably going to make this very narrow. So I'm going to type in one sixteenth of an inch and hit OK. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna create our helix um, along here. And you can see how this creates kind of a very, this is almost still too thick. You might even try, I don't even know if it'll let you do a 30 second, but I'm gonna type in a 30 second and try to run it again. When you start getting small, SketchUp doesn't necessarily always work as well as um, you'd like for it to um, at those very small measurements, but it looks like it worked out okay for right now. And so what we have is we have a number of different um, we have all of these tubes that are running through this um, this notebook shape. And now what I wanna do is I wanna go in and I wanna draw the holes. Um, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna push pull this notebook to give it some thickness. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna turn on X-ray mode. So that's located in your style section of your toolbar up here above. Um, So that's the one that's gonna look like this and you're just gonna click on this button. Um, I actually have that set to a keyboard shortcut. But what that allows us to do is that allows us to see the circle inside of this 
helix and where it intersects with this face. And so in this case, I'm gonna find the point where that intersects with this face and I'm gonna draw a circle. Um, but what you wanna do is you wanna make sure when you draw a circle that you tap that up arrow key to lock your circle to the blue axis. And so if I click in here, you can see how I'm just gonna kinda draw this out and you can adjust this to have as many different edges in your circle as you want. So if you want this to have like 24 edges, you can set that before you draw this circle. That'll make your circle look smoother. Um, and um, so I'm just going to find a circle. And in this case, I've just drawn a circle on this face that's a sixteenth of an inch. And you can kind of adjust this to whatever you want. But now what we're going to do is we're going to use the array function of the move tool, meaning we're going to create multiple different copies of this circle. So in order to do that, you're just going to select your circle, tap the M key, and then you're going to find this center point and you're going to single click. And you can see how when I click when I single click and then I move my mouse, it's moving this circle. Well, we don't want that, we wanna create a copy. So what you're gonna do is gonna, you're gonna tap the control key in order to turn on copy mode. You can see how when I move my mouse over this point and then I click, this created one copy between this, from this object to this object right here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I don't wanna type anything else in, but I just wanna type in times and then another number of copies. So in this case, I'm gonna type in 32. So you can see how what this does is this creates 32 copies of this circle equally spaced based on the spacing I set for the first circle. And uh, actually 31 would have been the right number, but that's okay, we'll just erase out this extra one. Well, now what we can do is we wanna delete out the face that's in here. So I'm gonna turn X-ray mode off and I'm actually gonna right click on my helix and I'm gonna click hide. And so what we wanna do in this case is we wanna delete out all the material inside of these circles. So you can't come in here and drag across these and hit the delete key because you can see how what that's gonna do is that's gonna erase out all of the edges that make up your circle as well. So what we wanna do instead is we wanna double click over here and what that's gonna do is that's gonna select this face and all the connected edges. So you can see how that has everything selected except the faces in here. And then you're just gonna hold the shift key and click and drag across this. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna deselect all of the edges that you had selected and it's gonna select everything that wasn't selected. Now, I can hit the delete key and I can erase out all of those um, faces that were inside these circles. And so now I can just go back to edit and I can unhide my helix. So you can see how that gives me my helix right here. Well, now what I wanna do is I just wanna push pull this up a little bit to give it some thickness. So I'm gonna push pull it probably an eighth of an inch here. And then I'm gonna go find this other face on the bottom side and I'm gonna push pull it an eighth of an inch down here. And so once I've done that, the one thing I don't like about this is it doesn't really look like a notebook in the sense that notebooks have covers on them. So, um, meaning there'd be a little thickened edge in here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the push-pull tool in create new face mode. So you just activate the push-pull tool and tap the control key. That means this will create a new face instead of moving your existing face. And I'm just gonna move this up a 16th of an inch on this side. And then I'm gonna use push-pull tool in the create new face mode on the other side and do a 16th of an inch on the other side. So you can see how what that does is now I have this, um, this cover look on my notebook. So if I was to come in here and add a color, like this blue color, you can see how I can actually add blue to the cover of my notebook without adding it to the edge and the page right here. So you can see how this gives us a little bit more realism with our notebook. Then you could come in here and you could right click on this and you could group this. And uh, now you can kind of do whatever you want. You could rotate it so that it's facing the direction that you want. You could place it on a desk. You could do a lot of different things. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Have you been using this extension? What extensions do you use in your workflow? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.